How do you follow one of the most lauded cars of recent years? How do you add to something that has had praise heaped upon it for its simplicity? What comes after the Alpine A110? Answer? This, the Alpine A110S. With an extra 39 brake horsepower, the S puts out 288 brake horsepower at 6,400 RPM, but torque remains unchanged at 236 pounds foot from 2,000 RPM. As you might expect then, top speed has increased by 7 miles per hour, but a 0 to 62 mile an hour time of 4.4 seconds is just a tenth quicker. However, as is hinted at by the more aggressive, arguably more attractive demeanour of the S, the biggest changes have been made to the suspension. Riding 4mm lower on 10mm wider tyres, with springs that are 50% firmer, anti-roll bars that are twice as stiff, and new states of tune for the ESC dampers and bump stops, it should be much more suited to somewhere like this. Estoril near Lisbon in Portugal is a fantastic track. Scene of historic F1 battles, it has a whole host of fabulous corners with some interesting and testing elevation changes. More pertinently to Alpine, this circuit was also the scene of a special stage in the Portuguese round of the World Rally Championship back in 1973. And that year, with an original A110, Alpine won not only the rally, but also the inaugural WRC title. <laughs> the car we have here is in ultimate S spec, I suppose, because we've got the lighter wheels, which save about five kilos, and then the carbon roof, which saves another two kilos, so it's seven kilos lighter. Not a lot, but then saved intelligently, I suppose, which is what this car has always been all about. We're in track mode. It really is the best setting, apart from anything else. If you leave it in sport, then the ABS, every time it triggers, sets off the hazard warning lights, which is all great. The thing I love about this is that it's still a really kind of delicate little car. <laughs> you can still feel the lightness in it. They haven't taken all that away, made it all, all grip and no handling, far from it. As you might be able to tell, this car really responds to some trail braking into the corner. You brake really heavily start with and then just bleed it off as you turn in. So what is there not to like with this? Given that this is the more track orientated one perhaps, or the more focused one, I still think it would have been nice if they'd perhaps given us the option of a limited slip diff in this car. I know you have to be careful in terms of how you set it up, in terms of still getting that lovely turn into the corner, but just at that point where you want to continue the slide, you have to be really, really brutish about it. I did ask Alpine why they hadn't given it a proper limited slip diff instead of the brake-based e-diff of the standard car, and the answer was simply, wait. Personally, I think it might have been a mass sacrifice worth making to give it the same playfulness on corner exit as it has on corner entry. But there we are. <laughs> it is really, really good fun, this, though. The question is, is it still a good road car? That's what we really want to know because that's where the original, or standard version, shone. So, after just a few more laps of Estoril, we headed out of the gates and northeast on the almost empty Portuguese motorways towards a national park and a piece of road that I have wanted to visit for some time. Despite its focus on a paired-back curb weight, and although there is a touch more road noise in the wider, tired S, the A110 remains a surprisingly easy car to live with on a long journey. However, when we eventually reached the streets of Covia, known as the town of wool and snow, should you be interested, it was definitely time to refuel, both the car, which claims an impressive 43 mpg, and then ourselves. It's fair to say that in our choice of food, we didn't quite follow the lightweight, fat-trimming ethos of the Alpine's engineers, but sometimes needs must. It took us about four hours to drive up here from Estoril this afternoon, and we arrived here in the dark, so we're going to get up very early tomorrow morning and see what this road has in store for us. Should be exciting. I hope. I hope it's good. <laughs> 
Cheers. And so to bed. Now, perhaps it was the super bock, but almost as soon as sideburn hit pillow, I seemed to be dreaming. I was in an alpine, no surprise there, and I was in the mountains. But as I slumbered, so I was slipping and sliding on snow, winding on opposite lock and playing with the throttle as I followed the lights through the darkness. Was this what we'd find in the morning? Well, no. What we found next morning was arguably even more surreal. This is the Serra de Estrella, or Star Mountain Range. Hewn from granite, it is the highest place in mainland Portugal, so it offers some spectacular views. But even more spectacular are the strips of tarmac running up and over it. This is just the most incredible road. It seems extraordinary that you can drive to the highest point of a country like this and on a really well surfaced road as well, wide enough two cars easily, white line down the middle. Wow! I'd wondered how I'd feel about getting back into an A110 with the shine and sort of rubbed off a bit. And not at all, in fact I think I'd love it even more. The attention to detail in the design is fantastic. The French tricolore subtly repeated, the body colour panels on the door, the graphics and the dash. The S gets orange stitching and more Dynamica fabric inside, and while we're about it, I love that Alpine hasn't added a wing and split it for the exterior, just for the sake of it. The only low point is that the infotainment system is still, well, a bit rubbish. Price-wise, the S is £56,000, which is £9,000 more than an entry-level Pure Edition, but only £5,000 more than a similarly spec Legend Edition. There's definitely more grip. And I don't think this is a car that actually needs the extra grip. It is still absolutely wonderful to drive, don't get me wrong. And they haven't ruined it. It's not a car that is terrible by any stretch of the imagination. But just by getting rid of some of that roll, some of that ability to transfer the weight and feel it moving around on the way into corners, adding a bit more grip, I, I don't think it's improved the car, actually. Alpine themselves said this is not meant to be a better car. It's just different. And I think that's pretty shrewd of them. It shows that they know exactly what they're talking about. It still rides really well over the bumpier sections of this road. It definitely gets better with a bit more speed. It doesn't quite have that fluid compliancy that a standard one has at all speeds. But it still rides well, obviously, again, helped by that light weight and these lighter wheels. You certainly can't get it moving around as easily on the road. It does feel perhaps a little more precise. Do you feel the extra power in this? Not much, but then 0-60 is only a tenth quicker anyway. I still love the way the Alpine just lets you get into a flow with it. You find that right rhythm with it. It's a beautiful car to guide through a set of bends. This bit of landscape here, apparently, these are called cheese stacks. True fact. In some ways, the S is a masterstroke by Alpine, because, presumably without investing crippling amounts in development costs, it has given customers a second option and kept the little French brand fresh in people's minds. On track, the extra precision and body control of the S have to be an improvement for anyone, 
they certainly make for a faster lap time. However, on road I think the S shows the standard A110 in an even more favourable light. The engineers really did get it right, first time. If the S had been released first, I don't feel that Alpine's return would have been trumpeted quite so loudly, because while its feathery fleetness of foot demonstrates that lightness is certainly critical to the perfect A110 recipe, so the supple, fluid, playful suspension setup of the standard car seems to be an equally rewarding ingredient. Not that I didn't want to spend all day driving the S on one of the best roads anywhere in the world. I loved exploring every inch of tarmac over the mountains in this fabulous little car, revelling in the cornucopia of corners and marvelling at the constantly changing landscape that seemed to metamorphose with the arc of the sun until the final dramatic scene change. As the sun dipped below the horizon and the sky was soaked in broad sweeps of orange, pink and blue, we drove right to the very top and stopped. A lightweight car rising to the highest point. How appropriate.